Hey guys, welcome back to a really fun tutorial. Today we're going to be showing you how to create this awesome effect on the right and five or six more effects um, with uh, what is called dynamic paint. So as you guys can see, I have a few examples that we're going to be covering today. The one on the right was accomplished with the waves, um, the waves feature in our dynamic paint. So let's go ahead and open up a new Blender document and I'm going to show you guys how to create an effect like this. All right, so we're in our new Blender document here. We're using 3.4. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete our cube and our light. I'm actually gonna delete the camera too. We don't really need that yet. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and shrink my face down so you guys can actually see what we're doing here. I'm gonna go ahead and start by adding in a plane. I'm gonna scale that up, S10, just to make it a little bit bigger for our scene here. Tab into edit mode, right click, subdivide. And I'm gonna subdivide this like maybe 20 times or so. That looks pretty good. Now we're gonna tab out of edit mode. I'm going to go ahead and add our dynamic paint. So what you want to do is go over to the physics tab over here, click on dynamic paint, and then type canvas, click on add canvas. And then under where it says surface type, instead of paint, you're going to want to click on waves. So now we are need an object to interact with our dynamic paint. So you can pretty much choose anything. I'm going to choose a sphere. I'm just going to go ahead and scale the sphere up a little bit, bring it up on our Z axis. I'm going to apply a dynamic paint to the sphere. Instead of the type being canvas, we're going to choose brush. Then we're going to click on add brush. Now everything should be set up. So if we press play and we start moving this around, you're going to see that we already have some interactions with our plane. Now we're going to make this even smoother and there's a lot of ways that we can do this. And of course we can animate this as well, but already you can see what our da dynamic paint is doing, right? So I'm going to show you guys how to actually make this a lot smoother. Obviously you can right click shade auto smooth, right? But we're going to actually go one step further and we're going to add in a subdivision surface modifier on the right hand side here. And we're just going to bump this up two levels. Okay. So now if we press play and we move this around, you see how much smoother it is now. And if you want it to be even smoother, just subdivide it and keep subdividing it until you're happy with the result. That looks pretty good to me. I'm pretty happy with that. And you can, like I said, guys, you can make it even smoother by continuing to add a subdivision surface. I realize I accidentally added it to the sphere, but we're going to go ahead and add it to the plane and I'm going to show you guys the difference. You guys see how smooth that is now. So guys, this is how you create these awesome dynamic paint effects. Just these two things alone are really all you need to create pretty much everything I'm going to show you today. It's just a matter of how to combine these settings to make everything look really cool. But as you can see, we have our brush, which is the sphere. And then we have our plane, which is the actual canvas. And remember, the more subdivisions you apply, typically the smoother it's going to look. So I'm going to go ahead and just save this to a folder so that I can go ahead and upload this for you guys. So guys, remember, if you are Patreon members, you can actually have access to this. I'm just go ahead and save this to where in the world is my folder? Sorry guys, give me one second. Instagram. I'm going to go ahead and call this dynamic paint tutorial. Cool. All right, we're going to go ahead and save that. So that was the first example. That was the ripples on water, right? Now, what if we wanted to create some kind of a hoverboard effect, right? So this is really cool, right? You can go ahead and animate this if you want to. I'm just going to show you real quick. If you insert a keyframe for your location on your sphere, move forward 30 frames, just move it down a little bit, insert another keyframe. Then we're going to duplicate our first keyframe and move it to like 50 or something like that. Sorry, I realize you guys can't see this. Just there's just three keyframes here. So we're just having our sphere move down and move back up. Just a little dip in the water here. Now guys, keep in mind this is not real physics. All this really is is just you're just basically changing the way this plane is looking. So there's no actual physics going on here, but it does appear to be like liquid physics. So I also want to take a note of some of the settings that you can actually mess with. If you guys click on your dynamic paint over here, you guys can mess with all the time scale. You can mess with the damping spring smoothness. For example, if we make our time scale 0.2 and then I go back to zero and I play this, notice how much slower the ripple is, right? So you're actually slowing down that effect and it does look pretty cool, but I'm just going to go ahead and keep our time scale to one for now. So again, this is just something that you can easily do. You can even go, go as far as to moving this over here and then you'll get something like this. Now there's one last thing I want to cover before we go through the rest of the examples, guys. I just want to show you that you can bake this. So let's say you're happy with the way everything looks. 
you want to click on the plane you want to scroll down to where it says cache and then as you guys can see up here you have frame start and frame end um, I'm just gonna make frame end like 120 so you're only gonna bake out to 120 and then if you click on bake it's actually gonna make a little folder inside of wherever this document is saved and it's gonna save everything to the bake that way it's going to render much smoother see that we're running at 25 frames a second there stops at 120 but you guys actually do want to be baking this stuff because if you don't bake you're just going to have some issues with like actually rendering things aren't going to look right i highly suggest that you bake these before you go and uh render anything so with that being said we have ripples on water that has been covered let's go ahead and move to the hoverboard section okay guys so i'm going to show you how to create sort of a hoverboard effect first let's just create a simple little hoverboard here I'm going to add in a mesh cube. I'm going to move it up, scale it down, and I'm going to scale it out on the x-axis. Just Let's just pretend this is our hoverboard. Um, if we really want to, we can go ahead and just give this a little bevel, something simple like that. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and apply that, and I'm going to shade auto smooth. So we have our hoverboard here, right? And we want it to hover above the water and actually affect our water. First of all, I'm going to delete our sphere here. I'm going to take our hoverboard and move it very, very close to our plane. I'm going to go to my side view. Cool. So I want our hoverboard to move from left to right, okay? Now, the hoverboard itself isn't going to affect the plane unless we actually have a brush applied to it. So I'm going to show you guys a little trick that I thought of that should work. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a mesh sphere, okay? I'm going to move it over to our hoverboard, and I'm going to scale it on the x-axis. Now what I'm doing here is I'm basically creating what I want to affect the water. So the hoverboard itself should hover above the water, right? But it's not actually going to touch the water. It will still affect it if we allow it to. The way we're going to allow it to affect the water is we're going to click on the sphere and you guessed it, we're going to add a dynamic paint brush. Now this brush, once we click on add brush, should affect our water. So if I take this brush and I move it along the X axis, you'll see that it is affecting the water. Now we haven't baked anything yet, so it's gonna look a little bit bad, but what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna parent this brush to our um, hoverboard. So I'm gonna click on our brush and, and then the hoverboard, control P, parent. And now whenever we move this cube, it's also gonna move our brush. Now you just take the brush, right? You go into your hierarchy and you hide that brush. Now we're gonna animate our hoverboard. So I'm gonna insert a location on frame one move forward to frame 60, and I'm gonna go over on the x-axis, and we're just gonna have this thing exit the scene, just like that, and now let's go ahead and play this back and see what we got. All right, so as you can see, we're gonna still need to rebake this, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on delete bake. I'm gonna bake this again, and now we should have a hoverboard effect. You guys see how simple that was? Now, this is a little trick because you don't understand that something is actually underneath of this, right? but our hidden object is still interacting with this plane. So and I think that was a really cool effect. You guys see how you can still make it look like it's hovering above the plane and actually affecting our plane like that? So I just thought that was a really cool, practical way to show you guys how to create this effect. So let's say you did wanna have a hoverboard above the water, similar to Back to the Future. That is how you would go about doing something like that. How cool is that? I thought that was a really, really neat trick um, you guys can definitely use this in your own project in a practical way. So yeah, that was just another way to use the dynamic paint. All right, guys, so I'm going to show you another way to use dynamic paint. I'm going to send a projectile through a sphere. So let's go ahead and add a sphere right here. And let's just add in any projectile will work. I think I'm going to use a cylinder and I'm just going to rotate it on the Y axis 90. So let's just pretend this is some kind of a bullet or something like that. And we want to send it through our sphere, right? And we want it to interact with our sphere. First thing I'm gonna do is click on our sphere, add our dynamic paint canvas, and the type will be waves. And then I'm gonna click on our cylinder, dynamic paint, brush, add brush, and we should have some interaction if we press play. As you guys can see, we have some interaction here, right? But again, we wanna go ahead and we wanna add a subdivision surface modifier because we want this to be very, very smooth. Now, if we go ahead and do this again, right, and we animate this, I'm gonna insert a keyframe for our cylinder here, insert location, move forward to frame 40, move it over on the X, insert another location keyframe, and now, if we go ahead and just quickly bake this, go ahead and let that bake, and then we play it back, look at that. Did you guys see that? Boom, how cool is that? 
Now, if we make our projectile maybe a little bit bigger and apply that scale, and then we just bake one more time, we should have a completely different effect. How cool is that, though, that we can actually send an object through another object and have it interact in that way? How cool is that? So that's another way that you guys can use dynamic paint to your advantage. Um, let's go ahead and move on to another way that you can use dynamic paint to your advantage. So guys, in the last part, you saw that we had our sphere and we actually sent a projectile through that. This time we're gonna add in a plane, scale it way up. We're gonna subdivide it 10 times like we did before. And then we're gonna rotate it Y on 90 degrees, perfect. I'm just gonna scale this up a bit. Now, you guys saw in my previous animation that I showed you how to touch a chrome wall with a hand. In this case, we're just gonna use our cylinder as our hand, uh, just because I don't feel like importing the model. We're gonna go ahead and click on our canvas. Well, we're gonna make this a dynamic paint canvas. Type is going to be uh, waves. And then we should be able to now interact with our canvas. Perfect. Now, as you guys can see, it's very much low poly, and that is because we need more subdivisions. So I'm gonna add in a subdivision surface, and as you can see, it's much, much smoother. You guys can also smooth that out. And now, as you guys can see, again, just like before, when we move this, we're actually affecting our surface just like that. How cool is that? So guys, that is pretty much how I made that hand animation that you guys saw before. I basically took the hand, I started it maybe like up here somewhere, and then I just inserted a location keyframe, moved to like frame 30, moved it over here, insert location, move it to 60, move it down, insert location. As you guys can see, this is going to affect our canvas here. But let me go ahead and actually bake that just so we have it all baked out. Cool. And if you press play, as you guys can see, we're interacting with our canvas. Now, different geometries are gonna affect this like much differently. As you guys can see, it's a little glitchy. I do believe that if you took this and rotated it on the Z axis, like that, I'm just gonna scale it on the X axis just to show you guys what I mean. Something like that, and then you go ahead and bake again. Should get a completely different result. Yeah, so depending on the actual geometry you use, the way that it interacts with the dynamic paint canvas is gonna be completely different. So keep that in mind as you move forward. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next example. So for our next example, guys, I wanna show you how to carve into the actual surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete everything I have here. I'm gonna add in a plane. Again, scale it up 10. I'm going to subdivide it by 10. And again, you guys can subdivide this however much you want. I'm gonna tab out of edit mode, add a dynamic paint canvas, add the canvas. Now instead of waves, we're actually gonna use displace. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what this does. But before I do, add a subdivision surface to that as well. Just bump that up to two, save your project. And let's go ahead and add in something to interact. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a sphere. I'm gonna move it up a little bit like that. And then I'm gonna add in a dynamic paint brush to our sphere, add the brush. And now we should be able to interact with our canvas. So let's go ahead and press play and just see what happens. You guys see what's happening? Why isn't it animating? It's not animating because it's actually displacing this time. So it's not actually going to be animating like a wave anymore. It's actually going to be animating, or it's going to be basically carving. Now there are some really, really cool things that you could do with this, especially if you have this sphere follow a path. You could have this sphere carve out an actual logo. So for example, if you go ahead and add in a curve circle, and you just kind of scale that up a bit, move it up, and then you click on your sphere, you can actually add a follow path constraint. Go ahead and target that, that um, sphere there. Just move this up a bit like so. I'm just gonna zero everything out. Cool. Um, so zero everything out for that sphere, and then click on animate path. And now, look at that. You see how you have your sphere following the curve now? Now watch this. If we took the sphere, scaled it in a little bit, scaled it on the Z axis, right? Maybe gave this thing just a few more subdivisions, right? Now watch what happens when I press play now, guys. I want you to cl pay close attention to this. You see how now we're carving out the earth there? Or we're carving out that actual shape? Imagine what you could do if you took your logo, applied a curve path to that logo, and then you actually carve your logo out of a plane or pretty much any shape. 
This is super powerful. I don't know why more people aren't using this. Again, you can shade smooth um, and you can get higher quality depending on the types of shapes that you're using, but this is just a base example to show you guys what is possible. How cool is that, guys? You can actually carve into the material. Um, and again, this works with uh, pretty much anything. It doesn't have to be a plane. It can actually be a sphere, whatever you want. But you can actually animate this, bake this out, and it'll look like it's actually being carved out of the surface. This is incredibly powerful. Don't know why more people aren't showing techniques like this, but I highly suggest checking this out and trying it for yourself. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the memory foam example. Okay guys, so you saw this super cool example and it's awesome, right? But I wanna show you guys an even cooler example that is called memory foam. Now, uh, the reason I'm calling it this is because that's what it looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete our path. I'm going to scale our um, sphere back up. I'm just gonna make it something like this, right? Maybe scale it down a little bit more. Click on our canvas. Now, if in our actual dynamic paint properties, you're gonna see something down here called dissolve. I'm actually gonna check box that. And I'm also going to drop this down and show you guys that there's something called time in here. Now I'm gonna show you what this does. Right now it's set to 250 frames. So I'm gonna go ahead and press play and I'm gonna interact with the canvas and just go ahead and watch what the canvas does. All right, now watch the canvas. Do you see how the canvas is now slowly coming back to normal, right? So now we can actually reset this value to maybe like 100 and you're gonna get this memory foam effect. And now again, you can completely customize this. Look at that. Now when you press down on the canvas, you're actually gonna get some rebound effect. So instead of a wave or carving into the surface, you're actually gonna have a moment where this is indented and then it comes back out. How awesome is that? Now I just wanna show you guys to prove my point here. You can actually add in a cube like that, move it on the X axis, scale it up, subdivide it maybe like 20 times, right, like that tab out of edit mode, um, and the same thing should work for this. So go ahead and apply a dynamic paint canvas. Uh, we're gonna do type is going to be displace and then turn on dissolve with a hundred reset. And then go ahead and press play. Now you should have the same effect over here. So guys, let's say you were working for a memory foam company and you needed to show them, hey, your stuff does indeed, um, oh, also make sure you add that second subdivision surface modifier so that everything is smooth and shade auto smooth. But let's say you needed to prove to them, hey, guess what? Your memory foam could look like this in an animation. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit glitchy and there's ways to solve that. So for now, I'm just gonna scale this up a little bit. But how cool is that, guys? You can literally take a surface and make it look like memory foam. Isn't that incredible? Now, it's a little bit glitchy around the edges, but I'm sure that can be solved. How awesome is that, guys? I just, I thought you would get a real kick out of that. It's honestly just fun to mess with. You could easily make a satisfying animation with that technique alone. So guys, that pretty much covers all of the effects I wanted to do. The only one I couldn't figure out was the skipping rock because I was having issues with the uh, path constraint. But if I ever figure that out, I'll, I'll come back to it and cover it at another time. I just wanted to make sure that I put out this tutorial for you guys because this content there's nobody covering it the way that I think I am, and I really think you're gonna get some good value out of this. I just showed you six different ways, one, two, three, four, five, six different ways that you guys can actually use dynamic paint in a real life situation. Memory foam company, ripples on water for who knows, maybe a makeup company or something like that, hoverboard for a really cool music video or animation, touching a chrome wall, which is that matrix effect that you guys are looking for, uh, projectile through sphere, like kind of realistic, semi-realistic physics animation, uh, carving a logo onto a surface that can be used for a multitude of uses, and then of course memory foam. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some valuable content out of it. If you did, consider supporting me on Patreon. I will include this actual source file um, as a part of my second tier subscription. Check me out on Discord and Instagram. If you guys need any links to anything, message me. They should be down in the description below, but if they aren't, feel free to message me, reach out. I will make sure I get you guys any information that you need. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.